And if I want to get a, a foul count now because I think we've reached a 10. Yeah, we are at least in double-digit pitches now, if not foul balls on, alone. And I, no, I've, I've seen home plate umpire get new, new balls at least twice. Zaleski finally hits a hole and knocks it down the left field line. Got to bring Riley around the home. Zaleski looking to take second. He'll take it easily. And that'll be a double for Nick Zaleski. And the Bearcats are on the board with one run. It is now 2-1, to one, Houston Cougars. And Zaleski takes another double on the season. That will be his 13th double in play this year. Zaleski showing what he can do with a bat. He was fighting off that count at least 15 pitches. And finally found a pitch he liked and drove it down the left field line, giving the Bearcats their first run of the game. But look, this is my thing with Pudge. I cannot believe this guy is still on the market. I mean, spring training is half over. And nobody wants to sign this guy. The Astros... Not a factor. You know, the Astros are one of the they teams should that be was... the guy, the team looking at this guy. Yeah. Except they don't want to increase their payroll at all. And if it gets down but to a bidding situation, it, a bidding for a, a who they could the Astros if they wanted to they could have locked this guy up a month and a half ago if they wanted to for a little amount of money. It's not going to be anything huge. I mean, he's coming off five pretty much dollars. pretty much retirement. And you could probably even get him for less than five. I mean, five would be a nice figure for the Hall of Famer that he's going to be. But still. I would think you could probably Look get him for less than five. 55-yard touchdown play. The Bearcats lead 7 nothing. Jake. And what happened is the Bearcats came out on defense and got a huge stop. And then their offense came out, immediately set the tone, and got that 55-yard touchdown. And that's what happens when you have a great quarterback like Rhett Pomar. He saw that Chris Lucas was open, but he saw Catron Houston downfield wide open with no one around him and set the offensive tone for the Bearcats and getting the first score up on the board early. It definitely did set the tone. Chris Lucas, though, has been shut down for the most part. He's not been able to spring free as much as uh, he would like. He, but he really hasn't, Charlie, but he's been doing a lot of other things on the ball. He, on the first play, he was instrumental on uh, making the defense bite on his play action a lot with the motion that he caused behind the line of scrimmage. And then le earlier on the uh, the second Catron Houston touchdown, and when he was in the middle of the field, he made a block. Catron was going across. He's been doing those little things that make a receiver more useful than a than a threat. And those are good things to have from other receivers. You can't always have a big play receiver. You need those ones that are willing to make that block. You need the ones that are willing to get in there and get dirty. And that's exactly what Chris Lucas is. So the, so the big topic of conversation, I think, the last couple of days has been Alex Rodriguez. Um, what is with that guy? <laughs> what is the deal with Alex Rodriguez? I mean, he's not an Alex. Uh, I don't know. Okay, uh, this is my Seinfeld for the day. Um... That was nice. I'll tell you this. Everyone in the world thought he was going to apparently fix the uh, home run record and make it pure again. But if you looked at him from the time he was in Seattle and the time that he left uh, Texas, he pretty much pulled the Bonds effect where he got 200 pounds bigger and his head was three sizes larger. And he just he looked like he was on roids. And nobody wanted to say it because he was A-Rod and he was on the Yankees. And... I, I'm not surprised, but again, I'm not really surprised by anyone telling me that they're on steroids anymore. No, nope. it's pretty much the uh, right now we're at the corollary. I dare you to tell me who's not on steroids, and you can shout out the names like Pujols, Holiday, you know, anyone else. But there's just not a point anymore where you can prove it. I mean, it's ridiculous yeah. now. And, and um, well, go ahead. I, I'm just gonna say right now, everyone in there, everybody is just so adamant about Albert Pujols. He's he's the greatest. He's the second coming. He's Blah, blah, blah. He's on that list of 104. Something in my head is just telling me that he's on that list. And I don't even, I'm not even worried about it. It's just, I know it's going to happen. Glenn Coffey had a really nice year, as, as the caller mentioned. I mean, this guy, he ran for 1,300 yards. He's got a great build for a running back. Yeah, he does. 6'1", 198. I mean, that's the kind of running back you like. You got him at 198. I had him at 210. Yeah. He's, uh, <laughs> they, they got him at 198. But he ran for 1,300 yards. Averaged about six yards a carry and also caught 16 passes out of the backfield. I mean, this is a quality running back. This is a guy that you probably could get. You know, he probably will still be there in the fourth round. Depends on, on the run that goes on running backs. But uh, 
you know, he might be there in the fourth round, and, and if he is, this is this is a good running back to mix in uh, in the fourth round. With yeah, Slayton. he might even fall to the fifth round, and like that's what really? the caller said. He could yeah. because this year the draft is so stacked with defensive players. Yeah. It is so deep in the f- defense this year. Teams are going to be loading up on that. And mm-hmm. you get around to the fourth and fifth round, we're going to have three picks in those two rounds. So if you if you uh, you're being logical about it, you can look into the, the fourth round, and if you can see that he might still be around, there might be a couple running backs still above him when it comes to the 15th pick in yeah. the fifth round. He might still be there. I mean, a lot of drafts even still have um, Sean Green, who led the nation in rushing last year, mm-hmm. in the fourth round. Yeah, he he had a bad 40 time though. He scared off some scouts I know at the combine. The com- like you look at the combine. Combine really doesn't mean that much. Look at his pro day. Give him the other chance there. Mm-hmm. The combine can give you a, a sense of how strong or how high this kid can jump or how fast he is. But certain players know how to play football. Regardless of who you are, Tiger Woods is the most recognizable face in sports today. Not even just in America, in the world. You can go to India and find people who know who Tiger Woods is. You can go to China and find out people who know who Tiger Woods is. All around this world, people are going to know who he is. So whenever he steps onto a course after being away for eight months, it's a big deal that this man is back and that he's doing what he does on a week week in and week out basis. Granted, he doesn't play every week, but... They're football players. Yeah. 